You're listening to The John and Heidi Show. Now, featuring the wit and wisdom of Dan Ferris. Okay, dudes, let's walk this sucker. On Sunny 93.3. Time now for The John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Mr. Dan Ferris. How you doing, Dan? Pretty darn good. You know, there's still a party going on. It's been going on for a long, long, long time. It's this day in 1827. Yeah. I was just a toddler. <laughs> for crying in the night. Night. Slamming saltines in my face, just <laughs> laying on the floor. The very first Mardi Gras celebration. Oh, oh yes. how did that all get started? Fired up in New Orleans. I sure don't know the story behind it, but it's still going strong to this very, very day. Yep, 1827. Holy cow. It was 1973, and this is uh, just fascinating stuff. The American Indian Movement occupied Wounded Knee. Oh, wow. Stay in South Dakota, the Pine Ridge uh, Reservation. If you don't know the story, look it up. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, Russell Means, Dennis Banks were uh, heading up, and I actually uh, met one of them in the late 70s in Minneapolis. I want to say it was Russell Means. Fascinating guy. Went yeah. to some symposium somewhere. And uh, yeah, great stuff. Things uh, fired up this day. With that situation in 73, things were said, mistakes were made, shots were fired, <laughs> did not, uh, did not uh, end well. And if you go through uh, old photographs of that whole thing, if you look closely at some of those photographs, uh, Elizabeth Warren is in the background. I don't think she, I don't think she is. Maybe. Who knows? I'm a newsman. Don't challenge me. Do not challenge me. News so fresh, we just made it up. Uh, All right. Dan, thank you for that report, sir. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, coming up here in a little bit, we're going to be uh, chatting with Ranger Dan. We've also got a guest today. We're going to be talking about an event that's coming up tomorrow. A lot of fun stuff on the way. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show Bonus Hour with Dan Ferris. When was the last time you got a new credit card? If you have a card that's been in your purse or wallet for a long time, you should check and see if you're getting the best rates. You may find a better credit card that will give you the points you want or cashback options you don't get right now. At BetterCreditCards.com, you see all the major credit cards Card companies and their best offers. Let them compete to earn your business. And if the one you have right now is better, keep it. Find a card that's a better fit for you at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Time now for Ranger Dan's Critter Corner. Well, I'm rough, tough, and ready. I'm a heck of a man. Eat my beans and weenies from a frying pan. He's Ranger Dan. He's here. I'm Ranger Dan. Well, I love to wrestle bears and lasso ducks, run over possums in my government truck. He's Ranger Dan. Is he? I'm Ranger Dan. Well, I lose all the campers and the animals, too. If you're picking on critters, I'm coming after you. He's Ranger Dan. Yes, sir. I'm Ranger Dan. Good morning, Ranger Dan. Good morning, Ranger Dan. Good morning. Dan. Uh, good morning. Oh, good morning. No, What's going you on? Seem well, I was going through the old mailbag last night, and you know, and every now and then it's usually just, well, let's face it, it's just love letters for Ranger Dan. That's uh, <laughs> pretty much. But I, I got to tell you what, got a uh, little a little note here, and it did kind of concern me. And I kind of laid awake staring at the old night sky last oh. night at the old Ranger Ranger Dan complex out there by Newton Hills, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, uh, was a letter of uh, concern from uh, from Marge and Larry Lindquist just talking about, hey, Ranger Dan, love the show. Of course they do. That's how they all start. Love, love, big, love the yeah, show. We're yeah. big fans, but we've grown a little, uh, a little concerned. Every now and again, you'll uh, start addressing uh, Heidi, who we love, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> who doesn't? Maybe, you know, saying a few things that kind of strike us is inappropriate. It means, you know, oh. John and Heidi are a happily married couple. And then, uh, <laughs> as far as you know, yes. <laughs> Say a couple of things and just, well, it makes us a little bit uncomfortable and we're not really sure why you don't just do critter knowledge because that's why we're here. And I really did. I thought about that. You know, little radio rangers, this is important. <laughs> As life goes on, you have to consider some things and you're not always right. And if somebody points something out to you, you know, it's uh, maybe a good idea to take a look, a little self, uh, self-reflection. self And so I just want to <laughs> go on record as saying, uh, you know, they may have a point there, Heidi, and... Uh, you know, I do apologize, and certainly to you, you John, not uh, sure where you're at with the whole thing, but uh, Rowan Ranger really doesn't have a right to make those little asides, do another man's woman, and that's all there is to it. But, uh, you know, in my defense, well, rangering's a pretty lonely business. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much spend my life traipsing through the woods and climbing over hills and down into valleys, navigating the waterways, and for the most part, the only company is maybe a squirrel looking for a handout or a... <laughs> Rabies-addled raccoon trying to crawl into my sleeping bag. 
<laughs> middle of the night. So we've all I been there. Do <laughs> have an occasion to be in well close quarters with a fine young lady like you, Heidi, who dresses so nice, keeps herself up so well, and smells so darn good. Ranger just can't help but think, boy, I'd kind of like to shrink you down to about six inches tall, maybe carry you around in my shirt pocket. <laughs> and hang you from the rearview mirror, my PT cruiser. <laughs> Watch you swing back and forth and spin around while I play poisons talk dirty to me. <laughs> That's all the time we have this morning, little radio rangers. What are you talking about? <laughs> Thank you to stand still go to church, say your prayers, eat your vegetables, don't be wearing crocs. Remember, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, except for bears, it'll kill you every time. This will Ranger Dan out. Yes, sir. Again, Ranger Dan's, I think, Critter Corner. If you struggle to drink without drinking too much, there is help. There are programs designed to help take alcohol out of your life for good at timeforrehab.com. Don't let a drinking problem spill over into other areas of your life. Get help to quit drinking and start living the life you truly deserve at timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Your insurance may cover everything. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Time now for Water Cooler Talk, brought to you by Aqua One. Mr. Dan Ferris back in the studio here. Sorry. You, know, uh, you have something over there, don't you? I do. I'm an investigative reporter. <laughs> Of course I do. I'm a journalist. You take it serious. I was actually looking for my source for this story, and then I thought, who cares? <laughs> he's citing his sources now that he's got that uh, entertainment okay. award. So you're, you're familiar with, the, and again, and I haven't mentioned this in, in quite a while, but it's good to keep in mind, by uh, spring of, uh, what is it, 2023, yeah. everyone and every business has to relocate to downtown Sioux Falls. Yeah. Because that's where the action is. Well, as you know, Sue Steel, which has been down there on the old riverbank for oh, yeah, decades, and decades and decades and decades and decades. It's turned into a mess, it sounds they're like. They're moving, yeah. There's mm-hmm. a big land deal going on, and that's going to be all redeveloped, and it's a pretty big thing. Got a price tag on it for development of about $185 million. There's a little glitch all of a sudden. A wrinkle here. A yeah. little. There's some shenanigans going on. Questions about ownership of a strip of land within the Sioux Steel Company site in downtown Sioux Falls has created... Uh, out of left field, out of nowhere, unexpected hurdle for that proposed redevelopment of the property. Here's kind of the skinny. <clears throat> the land in question was once a channel of the Big Sioux River and has ownership origins that stretch back beyond South Dakota statehood all the way to the pres- presidency of Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Mm. So It's been a while. Yeah, so this all has to do with records and who did what and why. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a little murky. So nobody that's alive today has ever had a claim to this. Ah, uh, that's where things get interesting. Uh, archived press clippings appear to indicate that the channel that separated what was Sini Island from the uh, western bank of the Big Sioux River was filled in and along with the former island was turned into usable land in the early 1900s. Sue Steel Company has owned and operated on the site since 1918. Yeah, well now, over 100 years. <clears throat> yes. Now, officials in the state school and public lands and attorney general's office are reviewing now maps, historic documents, and other information to determine whether the state may have a claim of ownership to that strip of land. What would the state do with this? That's a great question. It's uncertain what action, if any, the state might take. To claim that as, as its own, but if that is state land, then they, then they would have the right to actually sell it. Mm-hmm. And I saw online where somebody said, if that is the case, then they better be ponying up a hundred years worth of taxes and paying them back. If they've been paying taxes on this land for a hundred years, hard to say. But you know, all all you need to know is once the lawyers get involved and everything else, things are just going to be smooth. I won't worry oh, about that's it. Good. Of course, well, yeah, yeah, it's all going to take care of itself now. Yeah. Sure. And the way it'll come down is. Somehow the city will end up having a piece of it, and we'll have to pay for it anyway. So, <laughs> most likely. Well, I'm I'm glad you had that report, Dan. <laughs> well, you know, what was your it, source on that again. Doesn't it? Uh, the guy's name was Bart something. I think it's Polish. I don't know, but I, I do my best. That's what I do. Uh, it's, no, I can sleep easy at night because I know I did my best. You did. Okay. It yeah, doesn't yeah. mean it was any good, but it, <laughs> but it was my personal best. Yeah, I speak it was fantastic. And the bar is low, believe me. <laughs> and it, was, it was good enough for us. Believe so. me, when anyone ever says, hey, Dan, have you read this self-improvement book? The answer is no. <laughs> no, I have not. 
read that book, but thanks for playing. Well, if you'd like to read that story, it's online somewhere. We just don't know where. <laughs> <Thanks Yeah. for laughs> the guy who wrote it's name is Bart, so Some guy. appreciate it, Bart. Coming up in a moment, we're going to visit with Jason from the Compass Center about a cool event they have coming up tomorrow. Oh, yeah, this is huge. Yeah, it's all on the way. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show Bonus Hour with Dan Ferris. Do you have a lucky shirt? FunkyMonkeyShirts.com has several lucky shirts to wear next month for St. Patrick's Day. Or if it's a really lucky shirt, you can wear it every day. Green shirts, four-leaf clovers, Irish sayings, and more. Don't wait. If you order your lucky shirt right now, it can be here in time to wear for St. Patrick's Day. Find t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more at FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. That's FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. On the phone with us right now, we have Jason from the Compass Center. You guys have a big event coming up tomorrow, don't you, sir? We do. It's our 11th annual Compass Center Gala. Now, this is something that in the past people might remember hearing something called It's in the Bag. This is the same event. It's got a new name, and it's kind of got a different twist, isn't it? Uh, Yeah, you know, uh, events just like people um, change and evolve over the years as they grow, and uh, and this event has changed enough that we decided it was time to uh, put a, a new name on it as we go into the future, but uh, but it's the same concept. It's, it's a fun night to raise money for a serious cause. And let's talk a little bit about the Compass Center. So for people who are not familiar with this amazing organization, what is it you guys do there? The Compass Center provides counseling and advocacy services for survivors of sexual assault and domestic violence. People don't necessarily realize how often this happens, but it's on a very, very regular basis, and you guys are there to help all the time. Yes. Yeah, we're here. We, we see, you know, 800 to 1,000 people a year come through our doors uh, for various services, and all of those services are provided free of charge to the individual because we want to remove that financial barrier that a lot of folks experience with this. And this is the kind of thing, if you saw somebody in need, you know, we're in the Midwest, we're, we're good people around here, you would, you would stop and help somebody if you knew that they needed help. And this is a time when they're really in need. This is a, you know, a person who's going through something terrible. You want to stop and help. Here's the way that you can stop and help because, you know, they're probably not going to come to your house. They're going to go to the Compass Center. But in order for the Compass Center to be able to afford to continue to provide the services for people like this in need, uh, join us at this gala. It's a fun time. It's tomorrow night. And if I want to get a ticket, is it too late to get a ticket, or can I still get one? No, you can still get a ticket. You can you can go to uh, the website, thecompasscenter.org, and uh, click on events. You can call the office at 339-0116, or you can just come to the door. We will be selling tickets at the door. Doors open at 5 o'clock at the Sioux Falls Convention Center, and uh, you can just walk up and purchase a ticket that night. The event, again, is coming up tomorrow night. Uh, doors open at 5. There's a silent auction. There's a really talented live auctioneer, John Larson, and he'll be doing a live auction. Also, there's dinner, wine and beer tasting, and some live music by the Good Road Band. So it's going to be a darn good time tomorrow night, isn't it? It is. We're looking forward to a really fun evening. We're looking forward to seeing a lot of folks out there. We've got over 400 tickets that have been sold already, and we're looking forward to uh, to seeing everybody out there for a good time and raising some money to help out victims of sexual and domestic violence here in the Sioux Empire. If folks would like to get tickets or if they would like to just get more information about the Compass Center, how do we find you online? Thecompasscenter.org is our website. You can access the event page from there. You can make a direct donation from there. And there's a ton of information about our services on there as well. We're going to throw a link to that in our uh, on our Facebook page today as well to make that really easy to find. Jason, thank you for all that you do, sir. Thank you, John. Again, it's called the Compass Center Gala. It's tomorrow evening. I'm going to be there. Heidi's going to be there. We hope you'll come out and join us. It's a ton of fun raising money for, a, 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 again, an or, amazing organization that does such great things. And we've seen it firsthand in, in the lives of people that we know. And, you know, let's hope that you never have a friend or a family member go through this. But if, if you do, you'll know that, boy, by helping out the Compass Center, there there's somebody there to help them through it. Again, all of the information about the Compass Center on their website, thecompasscenter.org. And I've got a link to it at facebook.com slash sunny radio. Student loan debt is out of control for many people. Are you one of them? The average graduate walks away with anywhere from $25,000 to $40,000 in student loans. Believe it or not, 2% even manage to owe over $100,000 by the time they graduate. If you have several different student loans, let us consolidate them into 
one loan and one payment at singlestudentloan.com. If you have only one student loan, we may be able to offer you a better rate to help you get that loan paid off sooner at singlestudentloan.com. That's singlestudentloan.com. It's time right now for Entertainment News of the Day with Mr. Dan Ferris. You know him, you love him, so love him. Fabulous! Oh, fabulous! They have no problem ponying up 30 to 50 grand a month just for rehab. <laughs> oh, wow. True. Us mere mortals might buy a timeshare. <laughs> With those same Who dollars. Buys Who share? buys a time? Who buys a time? This yeah, is fascinating. Yeah. I think you guys are fan, right? The uh, the old uh, TV sitcom, The Office. Oh yeah, yes. which, oh, which was the huge. Yeah. This is pretty interesting. The Office is about to, uh, well, in the process of earning a whole new generation of fans, a new children's book, what? a children's book featuring kid versions of the characters oh, from how that cute. sitcom. It was announced earlier this week in honor of the show's 15th anniversary. Okay. Titled The Office, A Day at Dunder Mifflin Elementary. Oh, cute. Is set to hit the bookshelves uh, first week in October. The story will follow an elementary aged Michael <laughs> as he works to become the world's best line leader. <laughs> 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 Seriously. And the other members of uh, the Dunder Mifflin uh, crew, including Dwight, Jim, Pam, Stanley, Phyllis, Meredith, Ryan, and Toby, make up the rest of that elementary uh, school class. Oh, how cute so just going to pretend that? like they're all the same age now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, a, it's geared towards kids uh, four to eight years old, but apparently is filled in with plenty of nods to the original series, making it uh, equally as enjoyable for adults. adults. So this is going to be like real, it's not a children's book, it's real kids playing, it's a TV no, it's show? A, no, no, it's a children's, children's book. book. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the way you just said it, I was thinking that it was like real kids doing real. Okay, I got you now. That's probably why I said it's a children's book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I nodded off in the middle there somewhere. Sorry about that, Dan. <laughs> Nothing to do with your report. Everything, everything <laughs> I think with... that's adorable. It's I would actually, buy that uh, one. And actually, this is the second children's book inspired by the sitcom. Really? Uh, uh, Mark Cloud is, is the author. This one released in uh, 2019, and he also has a follow-up. It'll be titled, uh, Good Night Scranton, which will wow. be uh, released uh, oh, later this, this that year. That yeah, you they get. are. Yeah, they were talking to some of the, uh, the main characters from uh, the guy who played uh, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Asked about a uh, reunion for the office, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm all in." So that looks like that might happen too. Jim and so, Pam. Jim and Pam. Those yeah. was a great show. Who didn't White. adore them? Right? Yeah. They and were so cute. Michael Scott, everybody's favorite awful boss. <laughs> he was fantastic. They're everywhere. <laughs> Even though he was a terrible boss, you just loved the. And character. I think if you're old enough, if, and if you've you know worked long enough in your life, what was you've great about that sitcom is you identified all those were all based on those real people. people. I mean, oh, yeah. I could look at every one of them and go, "Oh yeah, I, I worked, yeah, with, I worked with him. Yeah, I worked with her." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there well, you go. Something to watch for some for uh, parents and kids both. Who doesn't love it? Nobody. Can't wait till we Fantastic. do the coloring book about us. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that would be a terrible idea. No Thanks way. for listening to the John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris.